ahead and get, give the Lord some glory. Declare your space, worship space right now. Declare your living room, your bedroom, wherever you are. If you're in your kitchen, you might be in your car. You may have had to work today and maybe you have an opportunity to turn in, tune in there. You might be on your morning walk, wherever it is. I want you to consecrate your space as worship space right now. I want you to just tell tell the principalities that I need you to are on hold right now because I came to worship my king. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. We give him all the praise. We give him all the honor. How many folks can give God the honor this morning? Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just go ahead and lift your hands and give God praise. Tell him he is wonderful. Tell him he's majestic. Tell him he is all-encompassing. Tell him that he is all-powerful, all-knowledgeable, all that you can live in our temples, in our hearts, in our spirits, even now, Lord God, so that we have access and connection with you at all times. Thank you, Father, for just being who you are. We bless you, we honor you, we praise you, we give your name all the glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. We are delighted that you've uh, tuned in and turned in to our worship broadcast here at Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. Otherwise, we know ourselves as the height, and we thank God for this opportunity for us to worship together. Amen. We thank God just for getting us up this morning, starting us on our way. Thank the Lord, hallelujah, that we were clothed and in our right minds, and we bless him for this mighty day that he's allowed us to experience his presence. I believe that today, Somebody is going to be healed, hallelujah, because healing was already so. I believe that somebody is going to acknowledge their deliverance today because deliverance was already secured for you at the cross. I believe that somebody's mind will be transformed on this very day so that they won't think like they used to think, hallelujah, that you'll be set free, hallelujah. How many folks can say that with me right now? Will you own that? Will you claim it? Will you appropriate it and say, I'm set free, hallelujah. I am set free to do the work of Christ. I am set free right now to, to, to claim the benefit that God had, had died on the cross for me to receive. I am set free to be everything that I was destined to be. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody want to be set free today. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same after today. Your life will never be uh, the, the, the same after you worship in this experience on today. And so we bless God. We honor Him and we give Him the glory today because I'm going to receive my blessing. How many folk can say with me, I receive my blessing today. I receive my blessing today. I receive my blessing today. Hallelujah. And we give Him the praise. Amen. Right, if you are out there and today is your birthday or any day between now and next week when we believe the Lord will uh, bless us to get back together again and celebrate his mighty name, we say to you, happy birthday, amen. And if we didn't get a chance to say to you, happy birthday, even on last week, we say to you, happy, happy birthday, amen. Uh, I'm so excited, I don't want to say that, that, that the Lord has blessed us with you, amen. He allowed you to come down into the earth realm so that you can uh, be a part of this mission to save the unsaved, to, to tell somebody about the goodness, the grace, the power, the mercy, 
and, and, and the loving kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank God today for you on your birthday. If you're celebrating an anniversary, we say to you, happy anniversary. Amen. The Lord be uh, glorified for the anniversary that you celebrate on today. We, we glorify his name with you. Amen. 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 I believe that, that there's a powerful word for you. Amen. But, there, but there's a powerful worship for you as well. Uh, we want to we wanna get ourselves. The Lord says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I can sense what those Jews felt when they were on their way into the temple in Jerusalem. That as they were on their way, they were saying that I, I can't wait to get there because I know that my healing's there. My deliverance is there. My blessing is there. My life is there. My transformation is there. My, 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 my love is there. Hallelujah. All my sustenance is there. My creator has made provision for me there. Amen. My peace is there. My joy is there. Hallelujah. And so we are glad that we had this opportunity to come into the midst of the sanctuary. Amen. Just to give his name the praise. Amen. Amen. Minister Mike was saying like this, throw away all your, what he would call carnal thinking, amen, your carnal behavior, all those things. Don't worry about those carnal things. We've come to have a spiritual upliftment right now and that the Lord will take care of everything that the world has done to you, even now in his word, he has prescribed your deliverance, amen. So we thank God for him today. We have something special for you this week. Uh, we're going to we're going to gather together for just a little bit on Tuesday uh, by way of broadcast. It'll be broadcast to you on virtually. It'll be Christmas at the height, and we just want to, you to tune in at 7:30 p.m. on Tuesday evening, Christmas at the height, and we're going to we're we're going to just honor His name, Amen. This week in a uh, in a powerful time of worship, just uh, for a bit on Tuesday evening, Amen. So asking that you would, uh, we'll send you out a link and we're, we're, we're going to ask you to tune in. Amen. As always, you can reach us on our website at www.hasselheightsfbc.com. And uh, you want to contact us, you want to be a part of this fellowship. Uh, if you want to give to the ministry, we encourage you to give to the ministry. We thank God for all of our supporters, all of our givers. And for those, if your heart has been moved to donate uh, toward this work that we are doing, in, in this area and in the body of Christ, amen. We are thankful for you. You can push the give button. You can put the push the contact us button. You can request a prayer. Or you, if you just want to talk with somebody, we got somebody who wants to talk with you. Amen. So uh, contact us there. We also have a mobile church app. You can reach us uh, via mobile app under Haskell Heights First Baptist Church. It's called The Height. And uh, if you push the button called Get Connected, you will, it'll send us a message to say we want, uh, you want to connect with us, amen? We want to connect with you, amen? We want to be praying for you. We believe in your change today. And as we approach this Christmas season, as we approach this holiday season, we thank God for the gift of Jesus Christ that he has given abundantly according to our every need that we can celebrate with a heart that says, Thank you, Lord, for tending to me. Amen. Last thing before I bring up the, uh, the, the political leaders, amen, to come to lead us in worship. I want you to, I want you to just focus in after we've had our time of worship and preparation for the word. Uh, I want you to do this. And we're going to pray for you at the end of service today. But we want you to do this. Uh, we talked about the promise that God sent to us. Amen in the gift of the baby Jesus Christ, amen. It was a long time coming, but a change was expected to come, and the change has come. And so we talked to you about the promise that was coming, and he, not only that, but he promised to come again and to receive us unto himself. And so we're expecting uh, what God has promised because he's already fulfilled what he previously promised. We talked about the promise, but we talked about why the promise was necessary because we had a problem. And Minister Mike came before you and, and ministered to you very powerfully on this. Do you trust him? Hallelujah. Do you trust him? Hallelujah. That our problem was sin. It was introduced to us in Genesis chapter 3. But, but the problem, hallelujah, manifests because we didn't trust God. Amen. We're asking, will you trust him in this season? Amen. Today, Minister Donna Davis, who's going to come before you, 
and she's going to talk about not just the promise, but the problem. But there was a predicament that resulted that the consequence of the problem. And we want you to identify with that predicament because God wants you to know that he has his eyes on you today. Amen. She'll come and minister to us. Amen. After the time of ministry from our Levitical leaders. Amen. So get your heart tuned up. You got a minute? Send a link to somebody. Say, hey, tune in. God's about to do something powerful in this place and in our lives. Don't you miss it. Tell a cousin. Tell, tell a neighbor. Text a friend. Tell them tune in. Send them the link. Say, it's not too late. Amen. We want you to be a part of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, prepare your hearts. Amen. That we might have a time of worship and celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring forth, amen, our, our, our music director, Sister Sharon Clark, amen. She's coming to minister to you at this political assembly. Hear the word from the Lord in the way of worship. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to thank God for, for this morning, for this beautiful day that he created for this wonderful life that we're living for, the activity of our limbs, our hands, our eyes to see, our ears to hear. Father, we bless you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We offer up our praise and our worship as a sweet smell and savor to you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God is so good, amen. And on this morning, we want to celebrate not only him but the birth of his son um, I know normally during this time of year we're singing Christmas carols and um, enjoying the fellowship together with one another so we want you to sing with us this morning we have a few Christmas carols we would like for you to join us in as we worship God because God can be worshiped through everything amen um, no matter how trivial it may seem he gets the glory out of it all Hallelujah. So if you just join in with us this morning, we got a few Christmas carols for you. Um, bless God.
Say, I lift my hand. 
Lord, I worship you. Jesus, for by 
without the power of God in our life. Everything that we put our hands to is destined to fail. We had no hope of ever getting anything right in our life. So when we make sinful choices without God, those choices not only affect us, but they affect those that we love. And I know some of you are going to say that the choices I make are about me, and they only affect me. But let me tell you something. The moment you go to buy that drug, you're affecting many lives. Go ahead. The moment you have that needle pierced in your arm, you're affecting more than just your life. When you're laying on the side of the street and your mama is crying, wondering where her child is, you're affecting more than your life. And when you end up in jail and your family has to bail you out and your siblings have to go hungry because the money went to you, oh, you're affecting more than just your life. Without God, because we don't trust God, our lives can spiral out of control. But it's not just our lives, it's our world and those that are in it. So the whole world was in a predicament because Adam could not, would not trust God. And this is where we found ourselves hopelessly following the enemy because we wanted our flesh to be satisfied. We were doomed, church, doomed to a life of sorrow. And it didn't even feel like sorrow because we didn't even know. Oh, Jesus, but God. Oh, glory. Mm. When Adam sinned, God could have just washed us away. Yeah. He could have started over. Hallelujah. Yeah. But what God decided to do was to look down. And he saw us in our predicament. Go ahead. And when we couldn't find a way out, Mm. 
even though we align ourselves with the enemy. So when we make these decisions that put our lives in danger, and those decisions not only affect us, they affect those around us. It affects our emotional health. It affects our financial health. They affect our social health and our well-being. In the midst of making decisions, in the midst of sin, in the midst of not choosing God, God chooses us. And he loves us. Yes, he knows exactly what it is that you are doing right now. And God said, I love you. Ah, oh, glory. He knows how long it's been since you turned to him. And he's still standing saying, I love you. So when we have an opportunity to do right, you made a decision last night. You made a decision last week. You knew that was the wrong decision. You had an opportunity to do right. And you still chose wrong. And God said, I still love you. Huh. Jesus. When we hear his voice, like when Adam heard his voice in the garden, when we hear his voice and we ignore it, he still loves us. Hallelujah. So when Adam had the forbidden fruit in his hand, and he knew that his, he had lived a life of bliss, and he still chose to go against God still chose to redeem him. So you know, we are out here drinking, doing drugs, and stealing. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I know. I know what you're saying. That is not me. I'm holy and I'm saved and I am living for the Lord and I am not doing any of these things. Well, we are out here lying. Overeating well, well, and doing wrong when we know what is right. There is no big sin and little sin as far as God is concerned. Sin is sin. And in the midst of whatever it is that you went through, that you're going through, that you're doing, God said, I need someone who can redeem my people. Jesus. And Jesus said, well, daddy, ooh, look what that one did. Mm. Oh, my gosh, that one just cursed. What? Mm, mm, mm. You know what, daddy? I'll die for them. Oh, Lord. In the midst of our sin, in the midst of our robbery, in the midst of saying no to God, Jesus said that I will die for you so that you can have an opportunity to be restored unto righteousness. I want you to be my brother. Yes, you that's sinning, I need you to be my sister. Oh, my goodness.
Christ died. God's only son. Oh my God. He sacrificed his only son so that we can be drawn back into a right relationship with him. To give us an opportunity to be restored. Not that we were restored, but to give us the opportunity to be restored. Where Adam put a period, God came back and put a comma. Well, uh, Jesus, when he said that he would die for us, he knew that it meant that his back would be hit with many stripes. And I could imagine the pain that he felt as his back rubbed up against the old rugged cross. And because of our sins, and because we were yet sinning, while he was sacrificed and while he was dying, he declared by the nails driven in his hand, I and I'll die for you. There's no greater love. Does any man have that he would lay down his life for a friend? What are you willing to sacrifice for God? What are you willing to give up to receive the undying, the unending love of God? Jesus. So no matter how much you love someone, sometimes they do things and you have to forgive them. We love our family members. We love them, but I, I declare sometimes they do something to us and we can't forgive them. See, we sinned against God and he didn't hold it against us. We hold things against people all the time, but God didn't hold it against us. So the second gift that God gave us was his grace. Mm. You see, God granted us unmerited divine favor, and that is grace. We have family members that we have cut off, and we won't say anything to. We won't call, we won't even call. Huh. Because of something that they have done to us. We wash our hands of them and Jesus allowed his hands to be pierced for us. Yeah. Jesus wanted to join us to him in spite of the fact that we was denying him. He gave us grace. He gives us grace. Grace. He saw us then and he sees us now and he still gives us grace. We belong to God. When we fall, we can get back up. We can be restored and we can still be called his own. And that is because of the grace of God. We have favor. Hallelujah. And I know you've experienced the favor of God when something should have went one way. It ended up going the right way. Romans 6 and 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. There is nothing that you can do there is no work that you can do to receive the grace of God because it is a gift that is freely given. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace was our way back from being children of wrath. It was our opportunity to be restored through faith. He forgave us when we didn't even know we needed to be forgiven. Hallelujah. He gave us grace. 
because he saw the predicament we were in. And he sees the predicament we put ourselves in every day. We have the love of God. We have the grace of God. And one would think that that is all that we need, but in order to be fully free, in order to be fully restored, we needed yet another gift from our God. Hallelujah. And that gift is mercy. Jesus. Psalm 51, verses 1 through 2 says, Have mercy upon me, O God, yes, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. It is a plea unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Because we know we've done wrong. We know we don't deserve it. Hallelujah. The Lord have mercy on me. When we have our family members that we don't show any mercy. When things happen to them, we say they deserve it. And we're not going to help them. Even when they beg for forgiveness. Even when they beg for love. Even when they we tell them they're unlovable. They're unforgivable. Oh my God. But God knew that without him, we would be lost. And he did not want us to live a life walking around as dead men and dead women destined for hell. He knew we needed salvation. So in the midst of our being lost, as God looked down, as Jesus looked down and saw our condition, he gave us mercy. He gives us mercy. What does that look like? Oh my Lord, he wiped our slates clean. Even though we deserve damnation, even though we deserve to go to hell, Jesus said, oh, no. No. I'm going to separate your sin as far as the east is from the west. And I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand in your steep. I'm going to be the one to face the consequences for your sins. I'm going to allow myself to be beaten, my body to be beaten. I'm going to allow my hands to be pierced. And yes, this should be you. What? Oh, Lord. But God had great compassion for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We were in a predicament. 
of our own doing. But God's love, God's grace, God's mercy delivered us, church. It delivered us then and it delivers us now. There is nothing, I promise you, nothing like the healing, restoring power of the love of God. Getting us out of our predicament was a job that only God could do. There was nothing about ourselves, no status, no work, no nothing, no amount of money that could have delivered us. So on Christmas morning, when all the presents are open, wow. don't forget. Wow. Wow. Hey. Don't forget to open the presents from God. God gave you love. God gave you grace. God gave you mercy. God gives you love. He gives you grace. He gives you mercy. Not only on Christmas morning, but every day. Every day. Hallelujah. I just need you to worship. Hallelujah. I just need you to lift the Lord up. Hallelujah. I just need you to give him some praise. Hallelujah, because he put a foundation in us. Hallelujah, that could not be shaken. Hallelujah, it's not made of sand. It's not made of twigs. Hallelujah, it's made of love and grace and mercy. Hallelujah, God. And we give him praise and we worship God today. Because you are worthy. You are worthy of God's love. You need to know that today. You are worthy of God's love. You are worthy of His grace. You are worthy of His mercy. And He gives it to you freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this Christmas season, let's worship Him. Thank you, Lord. And let's magnify Him for who He is. And forgetting us out of our predicament. He saw you. Yeah. And he sees you. Yeah. Yeah. And he still wants you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise. He's worthy of all the honor and all the praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Donna. We bless God for you. Amen. God saw us and he sees us. I like that. I like that, that piece in, in, in that word that says, you are worthy of love. You're worthy of grace. You're worthy of mercy. When we would ordinarily think that we're not worthy, it's not, it's because we're measuring based on our own human capacities. And, and, and our humanity alone is not worthy of anything that God has to offer. But what a plan from a mighty God. What a plan that God would fill us this incapable vessel with himself so that when he dispensed love, hallelujah, that he was loving something that was then lovable. He was granting grace to something that was then grace worthy, that something that was mercy worthy, amen, that he put himself in us by way of his spirit. In that word, she said that our spirit relationship was restored with Jesus Christ, because of Jesus Christ. And it is now that by grace you are saved through faith, not of works, hallelujah. Lest any man should boast, but, but we're saved because of the grace, because of the favor, because of the mercy, because of the love of God. 
Hallelujah. Oh, glory God. That's a powerful word. We thank God that we can go into Christmas. You know, there is a song before I extend an invitation and I'm going to call Minister Mike up to, to pray Christmas blessing over us. But I, I want to, there's a song that just seems to fit every sermon. Every sermon. And I'm, I'll call you back up in a moment, but you, you got it. Don't worry. It, yeah, you look at, you know I'm going to tell on you on TV, right? You know that, right? Amen. Amen. But there's a song that fits literally every sermon. And you hear a lot of preachers kind of conclude with this song. And, and, and it's either in the sermon or in the context of the sermon. But it said that love lifted me. Love lifted me. Right? When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love. folk know that love lifted you when you were in a predicament and you couldn't pay your way out when you were in a predicament and you could not find your way out you couldn't think your way out nobody could give you there wasn't enough power to get you out hallelujah love lifted you out of your predicament thank you minister he saw us that's why he sent Jesus and he sees us. That's why he filled us with his spirit. And so we thank God that as we get ready to prepare for this, this holiday and season, I'm going to do this. I'm going to ask Minister Mike to come on up and, and pray for us. Amen. That the blessing of the Lord would be upon us in this Christmas season. And I want to just speak to someone right now that sometimes you've lost, you've had... You've had inevitable loss, and, and this may serve as a challenging time for a lot of people right now, that as we embrace the gift that God has given us in this very season, that you've lost loved ones that are very, very significant to you, that you've, you've, you've lost jobs, you've been in, your, your predicament seems to be insurmountable today. Your heart is heavy and your burden seems to be unyielding right now. But, but I want to tell you right now that the love of God is greater than any burden that could ever be placed upon us. And so whatever it is that we've suffered, whatever it is that we've had to endure, we want to pray for you that God, that the love of God would flood your soul would flood your household would flood your spirit amen and that the unique love of god the light of god would come upon you in such a way that it would overshadow everything that's ever caused you to grieve that know that god's provision for you is yet imminent and we thank him for his love toward us amen after the prayer of blessing, then I'm going to ask, amen, our music director to come up, amen, and to close us out. So before we pray, we want you to know this, that there's still yet room at the cross. Hallelujah. What do we mean, Pastor? That God is still accepting souls, hallelujah, into the kingdom. That's what he sent his son Jesus for. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, here's how it goes. I say it, Jesus is Lord. But if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, I believe God raised him on the third day from the dead. 
And that when he was raised from the dead, hallelujah, that the death penalty that was placed upon him now was restored to life so that that life could live on the inside of me. I believe God raised him from the dead. And the Bible made me this promise that I am saved. And I can make you this promise on the strength of God's word that if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you are in need of salvation today, I need you to, to say that from your mouth. God, I believe in Jesus Christ. God, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that you, you sent your only begotten son for sinners, and so you sent him for me. Hallelujah. Call out the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, I, I want your salvation. I want your love. I want your grace. I want your mercy at this moment. Hallelujah. I believe that you were, were killed. I believe that you were crucified for my sins. But I believe that you rose again on the third day so that I could have newness of life. I want that life today. And if you, if you say that, if you've said that in your heart, if you said that with your mouth, I want to make you this assurance. God said you are saved. Contact us. Email us. HaskellHeightsFBC at gmail.com Connect with us. Push that button on our church app. Get connected. Go to the website and, and contact us. Request a, a prayer. Call us at the church. Leave a message. Call us at 803-754-6554. Do whatever it is that you need to do, but make contact with us. We want to make contact with you and celebrate over this gift of life that you have now received. Hallelujah. 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 After the prayer, we're going to close out in worship. Come on, Minister Mike. It was His grace. It was His mercy that embraced you out of your predicament. My spirit man has, has been touched this morning and, and I feel that, that there's a lot of people who are struggling right now because of this Christmas season. But I want you to know that Jesus is the reason for this season. And I want you to know that don't get so caught up in the material things. I want you to begin to embrace God in your spiritual essence. Because without Him, there is no reason. So I want you to walk with me into a spirit of a living God. For those of you that are laden and are heavy laden, God is able to give you rest. For those of you that are seeking answers, God is there to give you the answer. So Father, we come before your throne of grace as obedient and humble as we know how. Father, we first want to say forgive us. Forgive us for all our sins, knowing and unknowing. Now God, we ask that you send down a fresh anointing over your people. Continue to embrace us with your grace and your mercy. Father, we need you more than we ever need you before. Now, as we humble ourselves into your mighty hands, casting all our cares upon you, for you care for us. Help us to remember that you sent your only begotten son to save us from ourselves. So God, as we embrace and embark on this Christmas season, 
Let us remember to first open up the gift of love that you have given us. That each one teach one of your mighty, mighty, powerful, unconditioned, unconditional love that you have bestowed upon us. And Father, we will be so grateful. We will be so humble to give you all the praise and all the glory. For it's in you, Father, that we seek refuge. It is in you, Father, that we find peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, and peace on this journey. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the Redeemer of the Lord say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we stay in this space? begin to open our mouth and thank God for the gift. God, we just thank you. Jesus, Jesus, at the mention of your name, every knee will bow and tongue proclaim.
so that you can be a part of that just to get yourself prepared for for Christmas, amen, and the celebration spirit, amen. Lord, we pray that these messages, amen, have lifted your spirit, have given you a context and given you a reason, amen, for this season. We talked about the promise, we talked about a problem, and we talked about a predicament. But I'm going to come back to you next week, God willing, and talk to you about the passion, hallelujah, with which God pursued us, amen. And so we thank God today for this context that we have for Christmas. And we're asking that you would seek his face this Christmas. We're asking that you would spread his love this Christmas and that you would show his glory this Christmas and we ask oh man, that, the, that the blessing of God be upon you on this Christmas day but let it just be a representative blessing that's magnified on that day but that lingers every day during the year we ask that God would bless you coming in going out in your basket and in your store and that his his life his love his touch would be upon you perpetually every day and so we say this may the grace and favor of our lord and savior jesus christ rest upon you rule over you guide you direct you and keep you may the light of his love shine your pathway into the righteous place and may god keep you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you for your attendance today. Worship our King. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.